What do you do with all the excess paint that's left on your table after your acrylic pours? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you what I do with mine. Let's get into it. First, I wanna talk about what the skins are because we do have a whole bunch of new artists that might not really understand the concept of how to pull them off the plastic, how to store them, all that. I'm gonna give you some of the helpful tips, tips that I use. So this is a skin that I did recently. I was trying a Dutch pour on these coasters right here. And you know, it's a learning process. I, I got results that were decent, but not exactly what I wanted, but that's the norm with acrylic pouring. So this was the drippings off of those coasters. I basically blew it out onto the plastic sheeting, let it dry and peeled it off. And that's what you see here. So this is what we're gonna be making jewelry out of today is these two, three sets of skins here. Um, how I store my skins. Now I have these document protectors that I just slide the skins in and then they sit in a binder and it protects them because the skins are very sticky. They're gonna stick together if you lay them on top of each other. And so I put them in document protectors just to keep them separate so I can use them whenever I want. As you can see, there's tons of different colors, there's tons of different pours I've done. I do sometimes do pours specifically to make jewelry, and we're gonna talk about that next. So if I'm doing a pour specifically for jewelry, I'll typically do it on either a silicone mat, like you see here, or I will use one of my document protectors, as you saw that I store them. You can also pour on that or I will take the dripping straight off of the plastic sheeting that I use to protect my table. So that's how I make them and store them and collect them. So we're gonna move on to the materials that you're gonna need to make necklaces and earrings with. Now, I order all my bezel trays and cabochons off of Amazon. As you can see, they're, they're quite small but I order them off Amazon. They come in packaging just like this. So if you were to order it, that's what you can expect to see. I do try to make sure to read up on the materials I'm using because I wanna use some kind of surgical stainless steel. I don't want it to cause a reaction on my body or anybody else's body because I do sell these. And then I also wanna make sure that any cordage that I'm using is also hypoallergenic. That way it doesn't cause some kind of reaction on the skin. So those things are important. Some quality and life things that I purchased was I got this leather punch and it just happens to be the same size as the cabochon. It's very loud, very noisy, but very effective. You just put it on the skin portion and hammer it. It cuts the skin right out for you. Now, some of the ad adhesives that you're gonna need for this is this E6000. I got this from Walmart. Uh, you can get it from all kinds of different places. A lot of places sell that and it's fairly inexpensive. I wanna say it was about $5 for that tube. You barely use any of that stuff, so it, it's gonna last you a very long time. Now, this diamond glaze, the only place I could find it was at Hobby Lobby. It is also a very small container. It's just two ounces, but it was $7. So this would be something else I would recommend as well. You probably don't need it, but I use it. It just adds another uh, dimension. It adds some depth to the jewelry and I love the way it looks. So with that, let's get down here and actually start cutting out some jewelry for you guys. Okay, so now when I'm cutting out my jewelry and whatnot, I take my cabochon and I want to lay it down onto the skin and then I just kind of move it around to find something that looks interesting because underneath the cabochon you can see that you you're going to get different looks because it adds that it has that concave uh, bevel to it. So I'll go through and try to find an interesting part of it which I like this part, part right here. So I'm gonna take my razor just so that you guys aren't listening to 
this giant hammer smashing on the table. And I take that and I cut it out. I just trace around the edges. If you're gonna use a razor blade, please be careful. You know they're very sharp. Um, but, and then we basically have the first piece right there. And as you can see, there are wrinkles in it right now. Those wrinkles will go away. I will get those wrinkles out. If you're getting value out of this video, please tap the like button because it really helps support the channel and I appreciate each and every one of you. Let's get back into the video. Okay, so now I have my skins, they're cut out. They're looking nice. So I'm gonna clean up my workspace real quick. All right, so now what I do on the bottom of the paint, on the inside, is I take some of this E6000, a very small amount of it. You don't want a lot, because if you put a lot on there, it will have a bubble through the paint and you'll see it. So you really don't need much to adhere it to this surface. Then you take your skin, right? And I place my skin directly in the center of it. Ooh. And then I take the other side of the Q-tip that isn't wet. And I slide it around inside the tray. I make sure it, it is laying in there flat. Any wrinkles or whatnot right now, you can press it against the back of the tray and kind of work those wrinkles and stuff out of it. You want to try to get it as centered as possible, but because you don't want edges of silver showing around your necklace. You want it to look like it's completely centered in there. Then I take some of this diamond glaze I put a little drop of it on a Q-tip. So you don't need too, too much. And I'm just going to apply a little bit of it to the surface. Now, if you move the Q-tip around too much, you're gonna in introduce bubbles. And then once you put the cabochon on there, you're gonna see the bubbles. So I'm gonna take my cabochon. I lay it down in the middle and then push down on it. And then any of those bubbles that were in there are forced to the outside edges. And if you use too much, it's gonna come out around the edges too, so to be aware of that. And then, I mean, basically that's, that's one of them done. Now you need to let this dry. I give it a few hours to sit there and fully dry and cure before I put the cordage on it just because I don't want to mess it up. So you just repeat the process with all the other ones. I'll come back when we're all done and we'll take a look at them. So here are the necklaces and earrings that I created. As you can see, they're the shimmer and shine that that diamond glaze brings out in them is just amazing, especially if you're using metallics but it does give a depth to them. If you wanna watch another video just like this, click the screen right now and I'll see you there.